Good day, Butler High School families and friends, and welcome to our Student Services Parent Registration Session. It seems like the school year just began, and here we are getting ready to prepare for the 23-24 school year. Today, you're going to learn very important information in regards to registration and registering your student for classes next year. We have our counselors here who are ready to answer all questions and to provide you with information to make sure that it is a seamless and smooth process. So we want to welcome you to the 23-24 school year, or at least welcome you to the preparations of the 23-24 school year. And we look forward to continue growing, prospering, and making sure that Butler is the number one school in the nation. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, any concerns, please feel free not only to reach out to the counselors, but if there's anything that you need from administration, we are here also. And please reach out to us via email. Okay, thank you so much and please enjoy this session. Good morning and welcome or good afternoon and welcome to the Butler Student Services Parent Registration Session. We are excited about having you guys here today and about sharing this information. So the first thing we wanna talk about are things that we want to consider when you are selecting your classes or helping your student select their classes. Um, consider what your student is passionate about, what they have interest um, in when looking at even core classes as well as their elective classes. We also want you to consider um, extracurricular activities such as clubs, sports, work, when you're considering what kind of rigor you want to um, have when you are selecting your schedule. Um, all of those things work together. So you wanna make sure that students have enough time to have the full high school experience um, and be able to come out of high school as a well-rounded individual and not just focusing solely on the academic piece, but on all parts of the whole person. When you're considering your course selection, also look at where your student has strengths and where your student may have challenges. Um, we have, we offer study skills, there are organizational supports, as well as time management. So all of those things need to come into, come into play when you are considering um, what courses you want to select, in particular, the rigor of the classes you want to take. Also, when you are considering your classes, you want to think about what do I want to do after graduation? We begin planning for graduation on the first day of ninth grade. So your scheduling should reflect what it is that you want to do after you graduate high school. So if you're considering going to a college or a university, a four year or two year school, there are some specific admission requirements that you have to meet in order to be eligible for those schools. Um, if you're looking at the military, there are certain classes that are geared towards that. Um, if you're looking at going straight into the workforce, then those are things that you want to consider when you are um, choosing the selection of classes for the upcoming year. If you're considering taking a gap year, those are things that need to be considered and also what makes a good college. Speaking of what makes a good college, um, as parents, you play a key and critical role in this process. Um, we want you to be mindful of speaking negatively about colleges that can really impact your child's self-esteem. Um, whether your child choose to attend a four-year college, an HBCU, um, a large university, a community college, a private school, what, whatever they're tracking to do or gear, be geared towards, then you wanna be mindful of how you are speaking about those colleges because we want to encourage our children and have that selection because ultimately their selection of school is really their choice. Um, is there such thing as a bad college? Really, we won't, we won't say that there is. What, we want, what you want to consider when you're looking at college options is, is this college a good fit for my student, for my child? Um, is this college accredited? 
Is this college cost efficient and efficient and fit in our budget? Um, do I want to do a public versus private school? Um, so those are the things that you want to consider when you're looking at colleges. We have a great platform that our students are familiar with. It's called Naviance. And you can go into Naviance and do a lot of research with regards to the type of colleges that might fit your family's lifestyle, budget, and um, career goals for your student. Um, so how can you best equip your child with confidence and forge their own path? One is that you be the co-pilot in this process. Please allow students to take the lead. We want to guide and direct them and not make choices and decisions for them. This is a great way for them to begin to have decision-making and be involved in that decision-making process when it comes to selecting their colleges. Um, we want to be mindful that our child is the one that's going to be attending school and not us. Yes, our money is going, but we are not. So we want to make sure that in that process that our children are getting um, that what they're looking for, what they're wanting for, what their desires and preferences are, that that is what's driving the college research process. Um, it's also very good, parents, when you can take time to listen to what your student is saying, expose them to various schools. It's never too early to start college visits. Um, you can go to any particular school, go on their website, and they usually have a structured visit time where you can come and have tours on campus, or you can go do it um, in a more informal way. But it's never too early to start that process to be informed and not necessarily compare one student to another student or one college to another college. You want to look for the college that's the best, best fit for your student. Thank you. Hello, my name is Miss English and I'm one of the counselors here at Butler. At Butler, we offer three different course levels. We offer standard level classes, which this is the basic required curriculum. We also offer honors level classes. For honors, you receive an additional half quality point in your GPA. For honors classes, students should understand that there will be more reading and writing. It moves at a faster pace and they're more independent work inside and outside of the class. Students should be motivated and solid, have a solid reading comprehension. We, offer, offer, we also offer AP level classes. For AP classes, you receive one additional quality point. These are classes that are taught on the college level. Students should be motivated and self-disciplined. Classes are offered on an A-day, B-day schedule, which are year-long classes. Students are expected to exercise critical thinking skills, utilize problem solving skills, have a fluency in writing, and be able to absorb large quantities of content on a daily basis. In order to graduate, you need 24 credits. These are some of the credits that you will need. For English, you need a total of four credits. We offer English one in standard and honors. We offer English two in foundations, standard, and honors. English three, we offer in standard, honors, and AP level. English four, we offer in standard, honors, and an AP level as well. For math, you need four total credits. For math one, we offer it, it in foundations, standard, and honors. For math two, we offer it in foundation, standard, and honors. Math three, we have a standard class and an honors class. For math four, we have a standard class and an honors class. For your fourth level of math, we offer AP Pre-Cal, AP Statistics, Foundations, Honors Discrete for Computer Science, or there are specific CTE classes that will give you the fourth math credit as well. We also offer CCRG. Hi, I'm Ellen Men, and I'm also one of the school counselors, and I'm gonna talk with you about your social studies and science requirements. Let's start with social studies. There are four required social studies classes, and we also have electives. 
some of these electives can count for your graduation requirements. And we're going to talk about which ones of those um, will work. World history is one of the four required, and it may be taken at the standard honors or AP level. And it's actually called world history, AP world history. American history can be taken at the standard honors or AP level. The AP version of that is actually called AP United States history. Civic literacy can be taken at the standard or honors level. Economics and personal finance, I'm sorry, civic literacy also has an AP version, but that one is called AP US government. And then economics and personal finance can be taken at the standard or honors level. Then you have your additional social studies classes. And the regular honors level ones that we have are psychology, Latin American studies, um, African American studies. And then you have your AP classes. You've got AP psychology, AP human geography, AP world history, AP US history, AP US government, AP microeconomics, AP macroeconomics. So if a student chooses to take um, AP world history in addition to the world history that they took as a freshman, that's okay too. They can take both of those. Same thing with the US government class. Students can take the civic literacy class. And then in addition to that, they can still take the um, US government class. Science requirements. There are three required science classes, and they are the Earth Environmental class, which can be taken at the Standard Honors or AP. Biology can be taken at Standard or Honors levels. And then a Physical Science class, which can actually be called Physical Science, or it can be Chemistry, which can be taken at the Standard or Honors level, or Physics, which can be taken at the Standard or Honors level. The AP Environmental Science class can also be taken in addition to the Earth Environmental Science class if a student chooses to take both. That's okay. Um, if a student uh, comes in with biology as a ninth grader, then they're typically going to take chemistry or physics as an 11th grader. Then that's when the AP Environmental Science class can come in and be taken as a junior if they want to take it instead of the actual Earth Environmental Science class. Then you have your um, additional science classes that can be taken that fall into an elective category, and that's going to be oceanography, which is at the standard level. And then the AP Environmental class we've already mentioned, AP Biology, AP Chemistry, AP Physics. Um, just be careful during registration if your child is going to take the AP Biology, AP Chemistry classes, just to make sure they understand that some of these are double-blocked classes, meaning that they take up two periods when they're selecting their classes. Hello, everyone. I'm Ms. Johnson. I'm also one of the counselors here at Butler High School. So in addition to the graduation requirements that Ms. Minnett has already shared with you, students are also responsible for taking a health and PE. Students only need one health and PE credit to go towards graduation requirements. Then they need at least eight general electives. Those are classes that students are able to choose from a variety of different areas. So for a grand total with all of the other courses that are required, you will have a total of 24 credits, which is the minimum required for a high school graduation diploma. In addition, foreign languages, it's not required for high school diploma in CMS, but if students are considering going to a four-year college or university, you need to have at least two years of the same foreign language. Again, that's two years of the same foreign language if students are considering a four-year college or university following high school. Most universities and colleges like to see the foreign language in the, in the senior year, but again, it's your discretion. This is just a, a suggestion. Um, foreign languages that we offer here at Butler are Spanish. We go from level one up to the AP level, as well as French. French is levels one, two, and three. So some other things to consider when we speak of those eight electives that students are required to take, this gives them an opportunity to really branch out and see what Butler has to offer. And also to look at those things that they might be most interested in. Our first area of electives are visual and performing arts electives. So things to consider when taking any of these classes, there may be lab fees associated with it, 
which are required to be paid in full. Um, teacher recommendations might be needed if students are considering skipping levels. The proficient and advanced levels are considered honors level courses and receive a, an additional 0.5 in terms of the weighted GPA. So in terms of the performing art options, we have the band, orchestra, chorus, and theater. In terms of our visual art options, we have visual arts, crafts, ceramics, and media arts, which could be digital photography. And again, when we look at the levels, the levels for each of those classes will start from beginners, intermediate, proficient, and advanced. Hello, my name is Courtney Henderson and I am one of the counselors as well. I do wanna go over um, quickly our counselor distributions. So Ms. Cloud, who spoke first, has alpha, oh, I don't see her. Oh, there it is, um, A through C-O-M. Ms. English has C-O-N through G. Ms. Johnson, who just spoke, has H through L-O. Mr. Nazer, who is coming up, has L-U through P-E. Ms. Ortega, who's also coming up, has PH through SOS. Ms. Minnett has SOT through Z. And I have all athletes. So I'm going to cover the CTE portion of this um, presentation. CTE are, are our career and technical education courses. Um, you'll see on these next couple slides that we have several different um, pathways that are available to students. And when you're thinking about pathways, think of it as kind of an introduction to a college major. So um, these are courses that can that have to be taken in a certain order. And after the, the cluster of courses are completed, um, the student is considered a completer. Completing a pathway could be an attractive um, thing for a college or an employer as a skill set that a student is trying to master. Students can also earn certifications in certain pathways, which may also, again, make them more marketable or attractive to an employer or colleges. So as you see on the screen, some of our pathways would include business management, digital marketing, sports partners and influencer marketing, graphic and digital design, game art design, architecture and engineering, interior design, and then of course, our Academy of Health Sciences as well. Hey, my name is Miss Walker, and I am the coordinator for Career and College Promise, also known as dual enrollment over at CPCC. Um, this is for students who are a junior or senior and have an unweighted GPA of 2.8 or higher, and for students to get a jump start on college classes so they can have some classes under their belt when they leave Butler and attend um, CPC after high school or a four-year university. So students do earn college credits. Um, if credits are three or more, they also go on a Butler transcript. So this is a good way to boost a GPA as well while in high school. Um, you can also meet some college readiness scores by having the ACT, SAT, the pre-ACT or PSAT instead of the 2.8 weighted GPA. Um, we do have some virtual meetings coming up. So if you're interested, please either send me an email or um, go on to Butler website on the scrolling announcements. There'll be a link to a virtual meeting along with a virtual meeting link here as well. So multiple options to attend and applications will come out, Feb uh, will be due February 15th. So at our virtual meeting on the 1st, we will discuss everything that needs to happen between February 1st and February 15th. I look forward to working with you and your student to get some college classes under their belt and to get a jump start on college as this is an important opportunity um, with CMS and Butler High School. If you have any questions, please email me. My name is Jessica Walker and I work at Butler High School in Student Services. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, parents. This, uh, my name is Mike Nazer, also one of the school counselors. Uh, Ms. Walker, if you uh, would like to chime in on anything that I might overlook in these next two slides, please feel free. I appreciate your information. 
in those prior slides. Um, parents and students, uh, what are the difference between AP classes and CPCC dual enrollment? Um, AP classes are normed and valid nationally. Students will remain on campus. They are accepted for college credits with passing AP exam scores at out-of-state and private colleges and universities. What are CPCC dual enrollment courses? CPCC dual enrollment courses provide an opportunity get, to get on a college campus uh, to receive college and high school credits. They're cost efficient. For example, they are free. So you can receive some free college coursework prior to actually attending college after you graduate high school. They're different and varying options uh, to what we offer at Butler. There's just more of them that our um, students may be interested in. Next slide. Um, how many AP classes should a student take? Well, that's completely up to you. I hope that you um, have a conversation um, as a family to discuss what kind of courses your child wants to take. Um, College Board and the, uh, recommends um, that students that wanna to go to college after high school um, take AP courses to challenge themselves. They're important to uh, have included on your schedule. They help with GPA. Um, they help with academic rigor. Um, and their realistic uh, options. So, oh, one moment. I have my glasses on, but I can't see. Thank you. Are their post secondary college options realistic based on their natural aptitude? Are the amount of extracurricular activities they are involved in? going to balance out with the um, expectations of the coursework in the AP courses. Can you go back to the previous slide? Um, is your student's work ethic and study habits um, abilities to participate in AP courses reasonable? Um, and do, you, do, this, do your child have actual interest level for the AP course they're wanting to sign up for? High school is when we really see students begin to separate with their aptitudes and abilities. Um, it's very important not to compare your child to anyone else. They're on their own um, academic pathway um, with any uh, after high school plans, which could include military work or uh, college going. And if your, your child wants to do college, then they should be signing up for an honors or AP course. Thank you. Hello, Butler parents. My name is Valentina Ortega. I'm also one of the counselors. Um, so with course registration starting next week, we just wanted to let you know that all of the information that you will need uh, to help, you know, select the classes with your student, do this together. All the information you will need is going to be in our student services website. Um, you will find all information about ACTs, um, Navians, our high school policies, graduation requirements, and we're gonna have a specific, specific page just for course registration. And on the page um, will be the videos we share with students, uh, more information from different departments, from the science department, our math department, our AP. So all of that is gonna be there to help you. Uh, you can also find, um, if you didn't catch our caseload distribution on our homepage, you will see our picture. Uh, the caseload case load distribution and our email if you need to contact us. So on the week of February 6th to the 10th, students will be in homeroom during the Bulldog block time that we have. They're gonna get all the registration information with a copy, a paper copy of the registration card. During that time, um, they're gonna look look at our videos, review their um, re high school credits that they already have so that they can choose the classes and what is next for them. So they're gonna get all of that. Um, they'll be able to bring the registration card home with them so that you can look over it and help them select the classes that they need for next year. They're um, gonna be able to enter these classes in PowerSchool just like we did last year. So Power School is going to open up for them probably on Tuesday and will close on Friday. So they're going to have from Tuesday to Friday to enter their classes in Power School, eight classes and their alternates. Um, after that is completed, that first section of the registration process, we are then going to meet with students individually 
and advise them and answer any questions they might have in regards to the classes they selected or uh, what they plan on doing next school year. So if it's a senior, I mean, a rising senior, we will talk about all the different options that they're going to have. Um, so as you can see, here is kind of our timeline that we have. We're going to start with current juniors, then we're going to move to sophomores, and then with freshmen. So it's very important that students attend that week that they're going to see, receive the course registration information and also attend their individual individual meeting with their counselor. If they miss their meeting, uh, we're going to try to have some time to um, catch those students and be able to give them an opportunity to meet with us. Uh, but that's pretty much it. We do registration the whole month of February. And after that, we move on to our current eighth graders that are going to be with us next year. So again, you'll find everything on our student services website. After this video, if you go to our website, um, you'll see different links where you'll be able to join uh, your student's counselor. And if you have any questions, we'll be there. So we'll be there from 6.30 to 7 if you have any questions for us. So please join us. And thank you.